Hive. One, two. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, I'll be talking about uh, uh, event-driven systems backed by MongoDB, about how to build uh, reliable systems, and uh, some pitfalls that might occur during the process. Uh, I'm Andrei Litvinov. Litvinov. I'm a platform engineer in a, a company that builds a business based on uh, videos uh, of uh, sport games and an analytics based on these videos. Um, Let's imagine a uh, quite uh, simple um, distributed system with two services, which one, uh, one is orders and another one is payments. Uh, and uh, let's consider uh, the place on the order command is um, uh, sent to our uh, service. We are the API. Uh, when we process some logic, we persist uh, the state to a database and uh, we publish the event to a message broker so that other service, in this case payments or any other service in the system, can uh, react on the event and uh, finalize or complete the transaction with the payment. Uh, when it processes the event, it persists the state to a database and uh, publishes um, payment accepted event back to message broker. After um, the original service of orders can complete the processing and send a response uh, back to the consumer that uh, the entire transaction was um, successful. Um, let's consider uh, the case when uh, we successfully uh, persisted, persisted the state, but uh, some failure happened in our service. It was a cache uh, crash caused by either out of memory exception or a network issue or any other um, problem with the service. So we couldn't successfully uh, dispatch or publish the event to message broker and our payment service was not able to even know about the, uh, the event that happened and that uh, it needs to perform some logic, some operation to complete the transaction. So our system uh, ended up in inconsistent state, which is obviously not good. Uh, so uh, the key point uh, I want to make in, with my talk is that we uh, have to persist uh, the state and uh, publish an event atomically. But uh, uh, it's not obvious right away how uh, to achieve the atomicity of persisting the state and publishing the event. And uh, it took me some while uh, to figure out how to do it, especially with um, NoSQL databases. Um, probably one of uh, the obvious approaches uh, would be to use distributed transaction. But uh, in most cases, distributed transactions are uh, slow. They can degrade the performance a lot. And in uh, scalable systems, it's not viable to use distributed transactions or two-phase commit. Another possible approach could be to use write-ahead logging when uh, the service first tries to uh, write an intention, uh, intention about the operation and after that uh, perform uh, the actual write. That's the approach that is used uh, by um, databases often when they first write into transaction log and then uh, commit the transaction. Uh, Probably um, the most famous and most popular uh, approach for uh, this problem is to use event sourcing. And I know, I think that everyone or most of the people know what it is. And uh, the key point of event sourcing and the event store is that the state is built based on the events. And when you uh, write an event to event store, you kind of uh, change the state and publish the event in one operation because of the nature of event store. With event store, other services can get notifications of the event uh, that happened in the system. Uh, but in our case, um, as the topic says, we were using MongoDB and it was not viable to use event sourcing because we would need to change the entire system otherwise and it would uh, require a lot of efforts. So we were looking to some better. Um, ways to do it. And another probably uh, well-known or um, famous approach for 
uh, SQL uh, databases or relational databases. It's called application events or message outbox when service persists the state in one table or sort of tables and the domain event to the other table in the local transaction because SQL databases uh, support local transactions and they are often uh, quite performant. And if we don't use any uh, uh, the, the chance of deadlock and, and this approach is quite low, so the performance would be uh, more or less good often. Um, the downside with no SQL databases is that most of them do not support ASA transactions between collections or tables. And that was the case for MongoDB prior to version 4. And uh, we needed to figure out how it can be done uh, without local transactions. Just one second, sorry. Um, yeah, so if we are talking about uh, no SQL databases, um, talking about NoSQL databases. They are designed for scalability and reliability, and they have a mechanism of replication. It's basically uh, their internal uh, mechanism where the database writes all the uh, changes to the data uh, to so-called transactions log or replication log. And uh, knowing that, uh, when we persist the state, uh, we can see the operation uh, that appeared in the transaction or operation uh, log. And we can build our uh, own service to read the data and uh, reconstruct the event from the operation log and publish uh, uh, it to message broker. So uh, with this approach, we kind of guarantee then that uh, when service persisted the state, we would eventually generate an event and the system will get notified. So this operation is atomic. And uh, probably it's the only right um, approach for the problem uh, with NoSQL databases. And what are the options for uh, emitting the event from uh, replication log in uh, MongoDB? We could use uh, operation log tailing and uh, read the data directly from, um, from the operation log. And it is a proven reliable mechanism. It is used by uh, big companies like Stripe, or it is also used in uh, Meteor. If you are familiar with uh, some UI development, they also push the events from MongoDB to the browser applications. Um, and it can be considered as a pros or cons, but uh, written directly from operation log, we can emit event uh, right after it was published. Uh, it, it was written to primary node. But uh, it is also can be considered as a cons, uh, because uh, if our secondary node has failed, uh, it can uh, revert the operation, but event will be published. So it is more uh, difficult to achieve some durable uh, events uh, with this approach because we need to take care of other nodes and make sure that event propagated to some other nodes. Uh, and it is a private API that can change from a uh, version of MongoDB to other versions. So if we uh, write some code that uh, relies on that, um, we can be in a situation that we need to completely rewrite uh, that bit of a service if uh, the internal protocol changes. And uh, it is advised against by MongoDB because they offer a uh, new API, which is called Change Streams. And uh, this API allows to more easily um, get all the notifications of the events from the database and uh, send the events to, to the message um, broker. Uh, it had some downsides in the version uh, 3.6 which is quite old, and they uh, fixed it and improved it a lot in the new version uh, 4. So uh, they fixed the issue with resumability of the events, which uh, we encountered with our implementation. And uh, they also made it possible to subscribe to all the data changes from the entire uh, database. 
Uh, and they support uh, this rest and CERN uh, majority out of the box. It means that this mechanism will trigger the event or will send notification that event occurred only after the event propagated to the secondary nodes. And this approach is recommended by uh, MongoDB uh, because it has a um, fixed API and they guarantee that this API will stay. So if you write against this API, you kind of uh, save position. Uh, it has downsides. If for some reason you don't want this red concern majority, uh, you have no way uh, to, to avoid it. So in some cases, and I will explain this later, you might want to still uh, fall back to the operation log tailing. And uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, the case why you might want to use uh, operation log tailing if you are in the situation uh, or in the setup of the MongoDB with primary node and only one uh, secondary data bearing node. Um, and Arbiter which is a third node, but without any data. And that is because if the secondary node will go down for some reason and only one node primary will remain, uh, no events will be emitted by the change stream uh, until the secondary node will, be, will uh, join again the cluster. And uh, that will mean uh, that you might end up without no events for like a day or two days. Uh, we have similar uh, case in our system. So yeah, if you have only two data bearing nodes, it is, uh, yeah, you, you should consider using a pressure log um, yeah, to make sure you always emit the events. And uh, if you use MongoDB uh, 4.0 version or later releases, and you have uh, more than two or three, and three and more data bearing nodes, then you should definitely consider change streams because the API is uh, easier to work with, more um, yeah, reliable, probably. Uh, or, yeah, just easy. Yeah, um, there are some resources uh, that might be useful uh, to understand how the internals of um, replication works in MongoDB. And uh, the very good uh, article about modeling aggregates by one, um, which helps to understand better. Well, yeah, well, the, the Europe conference, I think everyone knows how to define aggregates, but still very useful um, article. And thank you for listening. Yeah.